All right, bones. In Maya, in the animation tab, and in this animation tab, there is bones. So I can click on a bone, and I can quickly go in here and click, hold shift. And let's see how this is going to rotate. I'm going to rotate it here. I'm going to rotate it here. So I'm going to put this at one on every pivot point, basically. And if I was smart, I would have done this at a 90 degree angle, but instead I made it a little bit more complex with the whole, uh, it's at a 30 degree angle and that's just for the aesthetic purposes. So don't model via aesthetics because uh, aesthetics change as the animation goes, meaning I can uh, have this at an angle that made sense, 90 degrees, and it would have been just fine. I could change it now, but you know, that's that's just me. It's after the fact and doesn't exist now. All right, so here we go. Uh, what do I want to do here? Let's see, it rotates there and it rotates here. Also, I want to put a bone here and here. Okay, and I want this to be pretty lined up well. So I think what would be nice is to move my rig. Now this rig is just one giant rig. So all these parts are going to be combined together anyway. So I'm going to do a mesh combine here. Okay, and then a modify center pivot. I'm just going to translate this over just a little bit. Looks like I missed a part. So this guy right here. And then another modify center pivot. Just like that. So if I was to move this down, would it change um, this whole structure? Well, the best thing to do there is mesh combine it and then take and modify center pivot it and put a D on the keyboard. So D allows me to move the pivot point and I can now rotate that and see if that affects it. No, you know, the cord actually moves quite well. And while I'm here, well, shoot. I'm also just straighten out this device. Straighten out this device. Rotate this bone. And rotate this bone. and translate it back. There we go. So I was able to straighten that out afterward. I do want to make sure that that's in the center there because I want this thing to spin around these these little cartridges. I want that to spin around even though there's a gap in there that kind of looks weird. Um, I, I think if you know this thing is shooting at you um, I don't think somebody's going to say, hey, there's a little tiny gap in between the third and fourth cylinder of the chambers. It just doesn't happen. So that looks a lot nicer anyway. Oh, the sight. See, that's what happens when you make everything into different little tiny parts. It's better to make giant chunks, but also keep in mind moving parts. So if this was... The site would be an example of maybe something that should be a heart, you know, a giant chunk, but you know, definitely the cylinders had to have been independent of it because when I skin it, that'll allow it to move. All right, so there we go. We got bones and we got these chunks. All chunks are going to be the same, and I'm just going to mesh combine it. And in the next video, I want to show you cleanup procedures, and I want to show you how to skin it. Skinning it takes a little while, so that's going to be a, a, a video all in itself. So 
This one's just making bones. All right, so I got a few more minutes for cleanup, so I want to take the time and put cleanup on this video. And how I'm going to clean this up is go into the hy hypergraph hierarchy, and you're going to see this. Wow, is that a mess? That's awful. Look at all this stuff. Tons and tons of stuff. What does it all mean? It means that there is a lot of history buildup and there's a lot of garbage in your scene. So that stuff needs to go away. If I do a edit delete by type history, notice how clean the mesh looks now. It is a mesh and then there's joints and that's how it should be. Another thing is you should probably name this root. Okay, and things that you might wanna do later on, uh, the surface should be called something like crane. Naming is very important at this stage because you never know what we're going to do with this thing, right? Uh, let's say for later on lessons, I might have something where it it translates down or something like that in that nature. If I had it uh, built the wrong way, that would be a hard lesson to kind of learn. So, let's see, another thing that I kind of see now is these vertices right here um, for the cannon. Those should go up. And let me show you what's going to happen here. If I move these up, And I can go to shell to make sure that happens and then deselect these. That way I only get these. Okay, if I move these up, what happens? Well, I don't see anything added to my scene. And that's what I'm really most concerned with. Does anything show up in my scene? If not, uh, the history didn't really take place. But if I go to this object, you're going to find that as long as there's nothing here under the shapes, Okay, I have no history, and therefore it's not going to be a problematic thing. History is bad. It's just all around bad. So that's cleanup. So that's what I'm talking about is this joint right here. Maybe, you know, later on uh, we can look at maybe rotating that via uh, keyboard. So I want to I label that joint something. I want to label it something like gun... Well, gun swivel, okay, like that. Another thing is maybe this one. Cham rotate, cham rot. Uh, what was this? This one might be something too. Gun rot one. And keep your naming conventions very smart. Don't don't put capital letters where you think that you're not gonna use it. You stick it to a naming convention and use that. All right, I think that's it. The rest of them are pretty useless as far as rotating goes. This one would rotate. This one, I could rotate and translate, I think. So how about lower? This one would be... Lower gun. There we go. So if I need to lower it on the cable, I could. All right, now that's how it should look. Uh, save your scene out and let's go on to the skinning process.